What's up, North Texas Barbecue Addicts? In today's episode, we're getting ready for the cooler weather. It depends on where you're at, but I'm here in North Texas, and uh, in the next couple weeks, it's going to start getting really nice and cooled off. We've had some spurts here and there of cooler weather, but um, nonetheless, we're going to be making some awesome Texas-style chili. I'm going to go to my friend Matt's house. He just recently got a 1970s model Weber kettle. We're going to break out a Dutch oven, some USDA prime ground beef from Six Brothers Beef Company, and I'm going to show you how to make some awesome flavorful chili right there on your kettle. Like I said, the weather's shaping up just in time for this nice chili recipe. You're not going to want to miss it. As always, we've got that NTBA 10 code. It'll get you 10% off your total purchase at Six Brothers Beef. And all the information will be right down below in the description box. Let's make this chili. All right, y'all, it's time to uh, get some chili cooking. I'm over at my buddy Matt's house, and uh, he had a heck of a find. This is a 1970s model Weber. Believe it or not, he got it for 20 bucks. You can't beat that. So uh, we got our Dutch oven right there getting heated up. It's been rolling probably for about 30-ish minutes. And uh, we're going to start by opening the lid on the Dutch oven and... Y'all know the routine. We're gonna start by sweating some onions down. This oven is uh, nice and seasoned, so we don't have to put any oil or anything in there. Go ahead and uh, get that going. Got eight ounces of diced onion going in. There we go. Gotta love the smell of some onion going into cast iron or even just right over direct heat. We're probably rolling about 250 degrees, give or take, on the Weber. And we're gonna just let this simmer real slow. Again, we're watching some football today. Cowboys play later on, so this is gonna be for some dinner later. Make it some Texas style chili. All right. That's smelling great. We are going to pour a little bit of Shinerbach in there, just a little. We'll add some more here in a little bit. Just to make sure nothing sticks to the bottom of the Dutch oven there, and that'll slow the cook down a little bit. And a little tip, I did let the uh, beer sit outside for about probably an hour and a half so it wasn't too cold and it didn't slow our cook down completely. So. That's what we're looking like right this second. We're rolling with hickory wood. Not that it really matters because we're going to shut this bad boy down with the lid. And uh, y'all saw how slow that got right there. We're going to close the lid up. And I'll check back with y'all when we're adding our ground beef. All right, addicts. It's been rolling about 10 minutes. We checked on the onions um, once in that 10 minutes just to kind of move them around and make sure everything was cooking up how I wanted it to. Let me show you what it's looking like. There we go. Got a nice, nice simmer happening. Now we're gonna add our next ingredients in here. Now these onions are nice and, uh, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for them to soften up. So they're softening up. They'll still continue to do that. They've reduced a whole bunch. Get that stirred around. Remember we added some Shiner Bach beer in there. So now we're going to add our next ingredients, which we've got some fire roasted diced garlic tomatoes. Fire roasted is key. We're going to add two cans of that. Right there. Man, that's beautiful. B E A U T I F U L. We're going to stir that around, incorporate that with our onions. And we're going to continue cooking because what we want is for these fire roasted tomatoes to reduce down and soften up as well. And then the next thing we're going to do um, is going to go ahead and add our ground beef after this does reduce down. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this mixed up with our onions and continue to let it cook. I mean, this is fire roasted is crucial. That adds extra flavor. And these tomatoes just so happen to have garlic in them as well, which is one of my favorite flavors, so 
There we go, got some beautiful color happening. Smelling great out here. Adding the fire roasted tomatoes slowed our cook down a little bit more. Again, I'm gonna do a little bit of dash of our Shiner Bock just to continue that flavor. And now we're gonna shut the lid back down and let it keep reducing for about 10 more minutes. I'll catch back up with y'all. So we've been rolling about 10, 15 minutes with the addition of the garlic fire roasted tomatoes. It's smelling awesome. We're gonna just building layers of flavor in this chili. You can speed this cook up if you want, but we're not in any rush. We're getting a good start early. So we're trying to reduce those tomatoes. What I did do a little bit just once or twice is I'm just trying to smash these tomatoes up, getting them really fine and almost like a mush or paste. That way it can just incorporate all these flavors we're gonna add into it and you're not getting huge chunks of things in your chili. And this is already starting to reduce a whole lot. So right now, again, just to recap, all we have in here is onions, eight ounces of onions, two cans of garlic fire roasted tomatoes and about a half of a Shiner Bock 24 ounce beer, so about 12 ounces of beer. Now we're gonna add a little bit of flavor into it with some beef flavored cubes here. We're gonna just drop it in right into the Dutch oven there and it'll dissolve. And it's gonna make it start smelling awesome also. And again, if you're in a rush, you can speed this up. You can cook it quicker, but you're gonna get so much more flavor doing it this way. So we put two cubes in there right now. We're gonna to continue to add flavor little bit by little bit, no rush, just incorporating flavor each time we open the grill up. So there you go. That's exactly what I want it to look like. You can tell we're still running hot. About 250 if I had to guess. Running on my buddy's 1970s Weber. Let's shut that down, let it keep rolling. Next time I see y'all, we'll add some uh, some more goodies to the to the pot there. So we've been rolling about 15, 20 minutes longer with the garlic fire roasted tomatoes, the onions, and the Shiner Bock. And then y'all saw we added the two beef bouillon cubes to it. Starting to really shape up nicely. We are going to add our next ingredient. I don't want to stay, say the star of the show, but it's definitely an important one. We've got some USDA Prime ground beef right here. Some of them are in hamburger patties, some of them aren't. Doesn't really matter, it's ground beef. Let's go ahead and just dump that off in there. We got five pounds of ground beef that we're adding. There we go. We're just going to start breaking that down into the juices, the liquid, and this is just going to slow cook its way and incorporate all these flavors into it. Look at that. Ooh, we it's smelling awesome. We're still not done yet though, y'all. We got some more stuff to add to this, this uh, Texas style chili, but we're going to let this ground beef cook down first. Dang, this is going to be awesome. So. I'm gonna go ahead and break this ground beef down, get it incorporated with all the liquids. Again, we got about six pounds of uh, prime ground beef and I will leave all the recipe down below in the description box as well as always with you know all the products we're using, times, temperatures, all that good stuff. So don't worry about that. It's gonna be in the description box below as always. So next time I see y'all, we are going, we are going to uh, break this down, or let it break down I should say. And next time I see y'all it'll be really nice and incorporated and we'll add our next stuff. All right peeps, we've been rolling for about 15 or 20 minutes more. We added some more hickory sticks under our Dutch oven just to maintain a good steady temperature. Now we're gonna add a little bit more flavor to our Dutch oven here. Oh yeah. That's some flavor town right there. So now what we're gonna do to thicken this up is we're gonna put some tomato paste in here. We got two cans 
of tomato paste. You use whichever one you like, but we're using the Hunts, 100% natural. This is gonna add some thickened consistency to our chili. Got a bunch of uh, bunch of liquid in here because we do got that quality prime ground beef. So we're gonna go ahead and add some of this tomato paste in. Man, look at those colors. That's just all kinds of flavor happening right there. We haven't even added any seasoning in here yet. Let's go ahead and mix this around. And you can see it's already starting to thicken it up. We'll add our uh, seasoning at the end. We just want to cook all this in. Get it nice and incorporated together. Stir it up good. There we go. So I'm going to shut the lid back down and I'll check with y'all probably in about 20 or 25 minutes. So we've been running along for about 20 more minutes and we're slowing up a little bit on the kettle. Don't really need to add a whole bunch more heat to it because we're almost done. We're going to add our uh, seasoning in now. Look at that. That is looking awesome. That tomato paste has really thickened it up. So we're going to be working with Suckle Buster's Texas Chili Seasoning Award winning recipe. We got about five and a half or six pounds of ground beef and it says each packet will uh, use about, it says that each packet covers about two pounds of ground beef worth of chili. So we're going to do three packs. There we go. It's got nice flavor in it. I'll have Suckle Buster's information down below in the description box, as well as uh, everything else, the recipe, the smoker temperatures, the, the length of the time we cooked it, everything for y'all to check out. So make sure y'all do. So we're gonna get that all incorporated in. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, beautiful color. Add a little bit of our Shiner box, still got a little bit left just for good measure, just to help mix around those ingredients. So that's what we're looking like. Look at that consistency there. That's beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna shut this down, let it keep cooking for about 30 more minutes, and then we'll uh, get us a bowl put together with some sharp cheddar cheese, some crackers, some sour cream, and uh, we'll give it a try. Okay, so it's been simmering for 20-ish minutes. The kettle's probably somewhere around 200 degrees. We didn't add any uh, more heat source to it since we knew we were done. Still got plenty of steam, as y'all can see. It's time to go ahead and plate us up a bowl. Plate us up a bowl. It's time to go ahead and set us up a bowl. So what I got in here already is some crackers, some cheese, and about three spoonfuls of sour cream. I like to put my stuff in the bottom first, then I'll add some cheese on at the end. That's going to make everything nice and melted. The sour cream, the crackers are going to break down, the cheese. There we go. That's looking awesome. And now we top it off with a little bit more cheese here on top. There we go. Just like that. That's what it's looking like. Let me go ahead and get this camera turned around and we'll give it a try. All right, everybody, and there you have it. That's some Texas style chili. We cooked it on a 1970s model Weber kettle. Shout out to my buddy Matt for letting me come over here and cook. We got football running. Been watching it all day while we've had this Texas style chili cooking up in the Dutch oven on the kettle. Got that sour cream in there, the cheese, the crackers. Let's crush up some of these crackers in here. There's only one more thing to do now, y'all. You know what that is. It's time to give it a try. Appreciate everybody for watching while we cook this up. It's been a heck of a Sunday fun day here. Hopefully y'all had a great Sunday fun day as well. Look at that cheese dripping. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Oh, wow. Yes, sir. Got that sour cream, the flavors from the the flavors from the suckle busters, 
We got the ground beef. All the information will be right down below in the description box. Appreciate y'all for checking it out. And until next time, you know what I say. Peace! Y'all keep on barbecuing. I got me a big old bowl of chili to eat. Cheers, y'all.